Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Fulton. First, I'd like to apologize for starting at this late. Anyways, we're ready to have a good breakfast show on Plus TV Africa this morning. And we'll be discussing Nigerian Senate, Akwabio dismisses impeachment plot against him. The FCC is also unlawful, an organization um, that's according to Olisa Akbakuba. And we'll be discussing that much later in the show. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front page of our national dailies as well as some top training stories but first let's check out our quote of the day don't worry about the pressure or the responsibility just leave in it have fun and when everything seems to be going right, just stay humble and remember your family. That is according to Roman Reigns, who is a wrestler. And he says this morning, don't worry about the pressure or the responsibility. Just leave in it, have fun. And when everything seems to be going right, just stay humble and remember your family. So remember what truly matters. Basically, that's what it is. Life matters to you, the life that you live, the people that you have in your life also matter. So remember them, remember your family, stay humble because as you're humble, definitely you keep rising to the top. I know life definitely will throw a lot of curveballs and pressures at you, but sometimes just relax. Don't think too much about the pressure. Instead, think of solutions to that. Don't think too much about the responsibility, um, but just leave and bask in life. Enjoy to the fullest. And in all of that, make sure that you stay humble and you remember the people that matters the most to you. All right, quickly, let's move over to our top trending stories. Well, this first one says reps demand immediate petrol gas price hike reversal. Well, the House of Representatives have demanded an immediate reversal of petrol and the cooking gas price hikes, citing increased hardship and job insecurity for Nigerians. The lawmakers, led by Aliyu Madaki and supported by 111 others, urged the NNPCL and the Ministry of Petroleum Resources to boost local refining capacity. They also called on the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to introduce monetary policies to reduce the inflationary impact of the fuel price hike. The World Bank warned that the recent 40 to 45 percent increase in gasoline prices may reverse the deflationary trend seen after the removal of fuel subsidies in 2023. Well, I don't know how that's going to happen, but honestly, if we're going to talk about hardship in the country, I'm sure almost everyone is in is in that bracket right now in fact they say there is no there's no more middle class we have the poor and we have the rich the wealthy people but even the rich are also crying at the moment because you know the removal of fuel subsidy has taken a toll on almost everything in the country we're talking inflation um, at an all-time high we're talking um, food of pri um, prices of goods and services increasing um, and most people can barely afford that. So I don't know if, you know, the reps speaking to the NNPCL, charging them to reduce the price. I don't know if that's going to work because I understand that there's a lot of logistics here at play. But honestly, we think the government needs to come in here. We think the government needs to do something about it. I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm sure there should be some initiative whereby you know that it can just um, reduce the hardship that we're facing right now. And hopefully um, they get to do that. I know we keep talking about fuel and gas and all of that. It's not even only that. The electricity sector obviously had a hike. We're seeing um, taxes go up. We're seeing so many things happening. In fact, re um, renewing your, your license right now might just be more expensive, your driver's license on your, on your car papers. So we're seeing the rise of prices in every sector and how are people supposed to cope and fare? That's a question that everyone is asking. That's a question that's on everyone's lips right now because obviously we're not gaining as much revenue, gaining as much income as we would love, but yet everything is going up and the ripple effect from fuel subsidy. Hopefully, something will be done about it. Another top trending story says, Naira among worst performing currencies, and that is according to the World Bank. 
The Naira was listed among the worst performing currencies in sub-Saharan Africa in 2024, depreciating by 43% by the end of August, according to a World Bank report. The Naira's depreciation is driven by increased demand for the U.S. dollars in the parallel market, limited dollar inflow, and delays in foreign exchange disbursement by Nigeria's central bank. Despite the Nigerian government's foreign exchange market reforms, including exchange rate liberalization, these measures have not stabilized the Naira, contributing to rising domestic prices, especially for imported goods. While the Naira appreciated slightly in October 2024, inflation pressures remain, with the World Bank projecting Nigerian economic growth at 3.3% in 2024, with further challenges due to fuel price hikes affecting transportation and logistics costs. We're supposed to be giants of Africa. We're supposed to be that growing and thriving nation, yet our currency is doing badly. In fact, a few days ago, it hit, it hit about 1,700 Naira. And I remember, the I think sometime in February, when it got to almost 2,000 Naira, I don't know what they did. I don't know the magic, but we saw it come down to about 1,100, 1,200. And I know one question that people were asking was, what did you do and why did you not do it sooner? But a lot of people obviously had their skepticism about that because how sure are we that this is going to be sustainable? Well, a few months down the line, we're here and we're still seeing, um, you know, the Naira crash, the dollar gaining strength over the Naira. And now having to buy a dollar, you're looking at at least 1,700, which is quite unfortunate because we should be looking for ways to grow our economy. We should be looking for ways to generate revenue. And of course, if we're exporting more, we're going to be having more, more cash flow in and we don't have to you know, pay so much to buy a dollar. I remember a few years back, you could get a dollar for about 150 Naira. And if you look at that, we're supposed to be progressing. We're supposed to be able to say, oh, I can even buy a dollar for 50 Naira. But no, that's not the case. Over a thousand Naira, approaching 2000 Naira. We don't even know what the end of quarter four is going to be like. But whatever plans, um, you know, the finance minister, the sector, the CBN, whatever plans they have, I think now is the time to start to roll out those initiatives to ensure that, you know, the Naira start to gain strength. Finally, federal government plans cash transfer for 20 million poor Nigerians. The Nigerian government, well, has planned a cash transfer um, for Nigerians. And, you know, most times you keep asking, how is that going to happen? What data do they have? But yes, um, through its social investment program, um, they plan to support 20 million poor Nigerians with direct cash transfer, focusing on reaching the 60% poorest in the country. Minister of Finance Wale Edu highlighted that increased revenue primarily from improved oil production and economic reforms is being used for these social programs and economic initiatives. In addition to cash transfers, the government is investing in key sectors such as agriculture, oil, manufacturing and housing, while also supporting businesses with loans and grants to drive growth and reduce inflation. Recent fiscal reforms have attracted significant investments, including $10 million from ExxonMobil, and are expected to save the country's 5% of its GDP, according to Edu and World Bank officials. Well, if we're making money, then it should go to everyone, not just the select few. Because the truth is, you can say you want to do a cash transfer now, but what happens after that money is done? What sustainable measures are you trying to put in place? to ensure that we're out of this crisis that we're in at the moment. You know how they say, you know, it's better to teach me how to fish than give me fish. In this case, it seems like the Nigerian government just love to give people fishes. And of course, we're not talking about fishes here. But they just love to give you little handouts. And it's just a stopgap measure. It's just something that, you know, works for now. Everyone is happy. Oh, I got an alert. I got some money. But that money is going to go quickly, especially if we're looking at the inflation in Nigeria at the moment. If we're looking at the cost of transportation, if we're looking at the prices, prices of goods and services, if we're looking at food, before you even talk about housing, 
So there are so many things that that money obviously is going to go into. And by the time the money is done, you are back to status quo. You're back to square one. You're back to where you started. So anything that we need to be doing right now is looking for reforms that would ensure that it's sustainable in the long run. Not just looking for a stopgap measure that makes people happy. In fact, it's just going to be a temporary fix. And that's not what we need. We need something that cuts across the whole nation, something that works for everyone and that is long term. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.